shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part 11 of the P40F build. Now, weathering is pretty well underway. The lighter oils have been applied, a semi-gloss has been put down to kind of lock them in and prevent them from being shifted around and muddied up by the darker oils that will go down on top. And before it comes back out, I think it's important to take a quick break and work on the exhaust stacks. Now, these are the starboard stacks. I stupidly removed all of the port side stacks from the sprues, which will make them infinitely harder to handle and weather. <laughs> Great. But they are all right here. So these have already been painted up in some sort of dark metallic-y thing. I think this might be MRP steel, but I'm not sure. But the first thing I'm going to come in and do is put down some MRP burnt iron on top. And to that, I'm going to add a few drops of Mr. Rapid Thinner. Why? Well, not because Mr. Rapid Thinner is supposed to make metallics a bit more shiny. That's not really what I'm after. More because it helps give you a little bit more forgiveness for spidering when you're spraying small. Plus, I'm going to be spraying this through the PS771, which is a rather shallow, or rather narrow diameter airbrush. And I want to have things flow pretty well. So a few extra drops won't hurt anybody. Also help make it a little bit more transparent, which is another good thing. All good things. Let's go ahead and start on the ones that are on the sprues. These are going to be a slightly long road to full painting because there's a lot of effects I want to put down on them. Burnt iron seems like a good place to start. There's those. I'm going to go ahead and paint up the solos, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so now that these have been burnt ironed, it's time to bring some oils into play. And I hate to use dust again because I've already used it all over the P40, but it's a great tone for what I'm trying to do here. contemplated airbrushing some Tamiya buff or deck tan or something like that. But it doesn't have the same level of control. I couldn't get the same kind of speckling shit going on with it. Okay, next up on the dirtying shit up list is some oil brushers, medium brown. All right, now that the medium brown is down, I'm gonna take this slightly fatter brush and just use it to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay, those are looking pretty solid. At least until the next, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> well, that's a problem. 
Always fun when you drop your uh, exhaust stubs in purple. Okay, I got the worst of it. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same sort of tap tap thing with the individual stubs. And if you hear what sounds like shelling outside, that's because it's New Year's Eve. Next up is some oil brusher dark brown. Now for this I'm going to move on to a smaller brush. I'm using these Zuki Muras because even though I love these brushes, they are starting to kind of fray at the edges. And that makes them tough for the detail work they were so good at. But it means I can come in here and Get the idea. Okay, now it's time for the final oil layer on the exhaust, and that is gonna be black. And I have a feeling I may have to supplement this with some pigments down the road. But for now, this should do us just fine. And critically, I need to keep this off of one exhaust stack per side because the front exhaust stack doesn't have anything throwing exhaust onto it. Okay, so the, here we've got the exhaust stacks. As you can see, we've got five of them with soot and shit on the ends and one that we've left alone that will be going up front. Now I'm gonna do that with the solos and we will move on. Okay, the P40 makes its triumphant return, and something happened when I put the semi-gloss down. I don't know if it burned through the oils or if my layer of dark earth was really shallow or what, but right here, you can see where it seemed to burn through the dark earth to some of the uh, chocolate and whatnot shading that we had underneath. So I've got a thin blend of my guns Dark Earth ready to come in here and kind of cover this up just a little bit. Yeesh. I might need to add a bit more body to this. There we go. Dial in how far I pull back the trigger, which is not much at all. Frustrating thing with this, I'm going to have to go back and add some oils to it, but eh. Okay, so first I'm going to start in with the prop spinner. And I'm going to be using a bit of Ammo's dark brown oil brusher, just kind of come down onto the uh, dental pad there and just we can get a little bit of ABT 502 matte effects thinner going on. to kind of dirty it up. Okay, so that's getting getting some love. Okay, so while I'm letting that top ring kind of dry up a little bit before I start working on it, I'm also adding a little bit of oil around the base of the spinner. Okay, so next up, I'm basically taking this ugly ass brush here and just kind of diffusing a little bit of the 
base facing oils to represent sort of like leaks and shit kind of streaking down the body of the spinner itself. Okay, so here is the spinner kind of cleaned up. These oils tend to fade quite a bit as they dry, so it looks really stark right now. But I am assuming it will take on some more muted tones as these dry out. And I'm also planning to blend it a little bit further as well, so working on two fronts. Okay, so I ended up not too happy with the way the dark brown went down on the spinner. So I went back over it with some oil brush or medium brown. And I kind of blended that in, and then I went back with some ABT 502 Starship Filth and Industrial Earth to make a few streaks coming back and a few stains and things like that. And I think this is looking much better. Stains are maybe a bit overdone, but at the same time, that'll keep them from getting lost in the final process. And now it's time to move on to adding dark shit to the upper surface. Now one challenge here is adding stuff subtly so that it doesn't blow out the fading that we've done because the fading is critical to the desert finish. And we also have to think about the process of layering because you have grime, you have exhaust stains, and then you have fluid leaks and they all sort of play together. And it's a matter of respecting all of them equally and giving them all their own time to shine. So first we've got some grime that we need to put down. And I've got a bunch of oils sitting on this little palette right here. And I'm trying to remember the names of them all. I think this is some shitty store brand brown gray from Hobby Lobby. We've got Shadow Brown, ABT 502, Windsor & Newton, Payne Gray. This might be Sepia. <laughs> um, this is Starship Filth, Neutral Gray, Cream Mud and Industrial Earth, and then up here, I believe, is... Which one is that? That is the Lucas Burnt Umber. So, a couple different things to play with, right? I think the Lucas Burnt Umber is a little bit rich for what we're going for, so I've mixed it with a bit of Neutral Gray and a bit of that Brown Gray. I think that gives a nice, fun tone. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit of that. I'm just going to start working it in. Kind of in this area. And I'm going to jump over and add a little bit of neutral gray to this. One difficulty is that a lot of these browns that I have are very shifted towards the red end, and a lot of the stuff on the aircraft isn't. Jumping here with a little bit of Payne's gray. I hate it when a fucking brush hair gets trapped in this stuff. You can see that's giving us a nice layer of stuff. Top of that with a little bit of something darker.
Back to our good old friend, the Deerfoot Stippler. Okay, so effects are slowly going down, as you can see on the wing root here. I'm currently kind of working in foot traffic heading out to the gun doors. I've added a little bit of Starship filth in here and blended it in. Now we're doing the same with, I believe this is Industrial Earth. Dispersion. It's the beauty of oils is you can work them in so many different ways. I want to avoid the brush kind of splaying out like that though. The thing I'm trying to do here is get a good amount of mess on the wing, but also not look at not make it look like it's all blended together. So maintaining a little bit of visual separation, some dots and things like that. And we'll be focusing more on that as the weathering continues. Part of the challenge of this is finding that sweet spot where the thinner is drying enough that these things become really workable as opposed to smearable. And some places, like up here, we're there, and other places back here, we're not. So we'll wait for that to get ready. We'll go ahead and start moving out some more stuff. Okay, the oil fun is continuing. Got this side going pretty well, looking pretty scuzzed up. And one thing I did over here, let's see if we can move around here, is I've gone ahead and subtly done some shading on like the flap line here, the gun door to kind of pick it out a little bit, and some of these other little panel lines. And it has kind of gone away since I came in here and started adding more oils and shit. So I'm going to probably go back and like touch up that line a little bit as we go. But yeah, it's coming along. So over on this side, hopefully this area has dried up a bit now and I can 
safely come in here and play. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that's looking pretty cool. Now I need to come in here and I want to add those same little skunk stripe things. So there's nothing particularly fancy about this operation. Something about like about working oils dry is you can really, really tweak them quite a bit. Okay. So first we're going to grab a little bit of shadow brown and then all that I'm going to do is come in here just lightly kind of dab the outline of the gun door Now it's a matter of coming in here. cleaning most of this away. And this doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we're going to do more blending. Where they get a bit big like this, we can come in and clean that up in a minute. Then we come in with a big flat brush like this. the blending. Okay, so that's a nice dirty looking wing. One thing I'm intentionally not doing is carrying the panel line stuff over into the touched up dark earth because I want to keep those looking more fresh as opposed to the more battered up sections in here towards the fuselage. And I think we've got that working quite nicely. Something else I want to touch on in here, even though P40s don't have big old, you know, skid marks from the guns coming back over the wings, you do have a little bit of buildup along the leading edge right here, right around the barrels. So for that, a little bit of dark earth, or not dark earth, starship filth. I'm gonna need to come back here with some black or something like that too to just give it a little bit more. Okay, so the oils are blending in nicely. We've got a pretty good dirty wing going on here and some pretty decent work on the wing roots. Now I need to move on to the cowl and the fuselage sides, but there's a problem. I don't really have a good way to capture this on camera. So I am going to pause and pick back up and kind of walk through what I did after I did it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added some oil staining to the cowl panel, specifically the ones that would be removed to work on the engine. So those are the ones with the more prominent fasteners kind of along the top and then down along here and all back in this area. So I've done that on both sides. 
along with a little bit of outlining around the exhaust stacks themselves, just figuring there's a lot of shit pouring out there. Those are going to get dirty. And they set up some weathering that's going to happen back here, kind of along with the exhaust staining. So things are going good. I want to let this sit overnight and kind of recontemplate in the morning. Okay, so in the process of filming this video, I somehow forgot to check the battery light on the microphone. And as such, I am recording a voiceover to replace the completely dead air that exists here. So here you can see that I've gone ahead and added the exhaust staining coming off of the exhaust stacks, hitting a bit of crud seeping out from the cowl panels at that bulkhead just ahead of the cockpit and basically making a big dirty mess of the side of the fuselage. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much trying to go off of the pattern seen on a lot of P-40s. I'm not sure that I nailed it exactly, but you do see this sort of top and bottom fluid staining kind of mixing with the exhaust staining as it smears back along the fuselage. And then of course there's the foot traffic grime and things like that, and there is some staining on the wing roots from, I believe, from uh, shit going on with the fuel tanks that are in the wing roots right there. Now, an interesting thing on the starboard side here is it is much, much lighter than it is on the other side, entirely because the port side is over dark earth and the starboard side here is over middle stone. Other than that, it's the exact same oil treatment stuff. It's starship filth, it's neutral gray, dust, etc. And on this one, I did the same thing where once it hits the bulkhead there after the cowl, fluids start getting in the way. You start getting staining streaking back. And I added that big old stain along the bottom, the big old streak kind of thing. Uh, again, off of P40 references, there seems to be something there that is prone to leaking and getting out into the airstream. So a lot of fun uh, making this nice and dirty. I'm not sure if I got it quite as good as I could have, but overall, I am pretty satisfied with it. And I think next time I might bring in the airbrush just to get a bit more color solidification going on because the oils were a bit more transparent than I was hoping for. Okay, another thing I wanted to look at here is the cowl and how it's coming. And so you can see I've got some fluids streaking off just there aft of the spinner. And I've also got some streaks coming off of the various fasteners on the cowl. And it's interesting, if you look at reference photos, you can see that the streaks don't go straight back in the direction of airflow. My guess with that is it has to do with the turbulence of the prop or something like that, basically making weird air vortices that are pushing fluids in interesting different directions. And so it was a lot of fun to go in there and put some oil dots down and basically take them up in weird diagonals and things like that. So thanks to Will Pattison, I finally got my hands on some good reference photos showing the weathering patterns on the underside of P40s. And they show pretty close to what's going on here already. And that is basically we've got shit around the wing roots on the underside. And we've got crap right here sort of aft of the radiator outlets. And we've got this kind of smudging stuff going on on this ventral spine. And I got a bit curious uh, what was causing the stuff basically on either side of it, like here and here. And went and looked around and dug up a cutaway. And it turns out that the P-40 had three fuel tanks. It had one up here in the fuselage aft of the cockpit. That's the largest one. It's like 52 gallons or something like that. But it also had two additional tanks right in this area. It had a basically like a main wing tank that was like 40 something gallons kind of in here. And it had a reserve tank right in front of it that's about 20 gallons. And so my guess is what all this shit is, it's not leaking fuel tanks necessarily, but maybe, um, you know, leaking fuel pumps or fuel lines. Uh, it could be degraded seals from serving in the desert or just you know, shit spilling around from maintenance, who knows. But that would definitely explain the griminess down here. And one thing I want to add to this is I may want to cloud this up a little bit and go in with the panel lines here and darken those up because that's what really shows through on some of these photos is kind of like that 
seeping quality where it's essentially seeping out through the panel lines and then getting washed back in the airstream. So yeah, it's pretty cool to, to see the, uh, you know, to see those reference photos finally and see them match what's going on on, on the top and have an understanding of why fluids are appearing where they're appearing. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of keep at it, build this up a little bit more and check back in in a few minutes because we've already done a lot of watch me stab shit with a brush. Okay, so I've added quite a bit to the underside oil work. Let's walk through where I'm at and what we're gonna do next. So along in here, I've kind of beefed up what's been going on with the leaks, quote unquote, from the main wing tank and the reserve tank and all that kind of stuff built up in here. I've also added some extra oil work around the panel lines for that kind of seeping look. I kind of want to go in here and tweak these a little bit more because I'm much happier with like that look right there. I've also added the dust kicked up from the tires on the outside of the gear bays on both sides here. And I've done the stains coming off of the guns and the blast tubes again with these uh, latitudinal accumulations in the panel lines. Also some sort of in front of these little bulges in the wing. But I do want to go in here and just kind of ugly up these guys just a tiny little bit. Let's see if we can do this without fucking it all up. Yeah, I think we can do something with that. Yeah, I have to keep reminding myself these things dry slightly lighter than they look now, too. Okay, so next up, it's time to come in here and do some spattering, which will kind of break up the overly geometric look of this and add just a general sense of filth and dirt. And for this, I have whipped up four different colors. So I have ABT 502 Shadow Brown, or that might be sepia, same difference. ABT 502 Starship Filth, some Windsor & Newton Naples Yellow, and finally some ABT 502 Dust. Now the way that I do these is basically I've got a brush. I come in here and I stir it up, make sure that I'm getting actual pigment on this thing. Kind of keep stirring it up so that it's, because it settles out really fast in this ammo thinner. So once I've got the brush loaded, take a bunch of it off on a paper towel. Not so much that it's useless, and then with an airbrush to flick the brush with, or sorry, and then with an airbrush needle to flick the brush with, I make sure that I'm flicking a decent amount, not way too much onto the model. You can see it kind of accumulating up here, like on the cowl. And basically, we're just going to do that in the places where we would expect to see shit spraying off and streaming off and all that. The one frustrating thing is how slow this process is because you only get maybe at best like 10 good flicks before you need to reload the brush. And you can't come in and load the brush and just start flicking because it'll be way overpowered. And another thing you have to keep in mind is to hold the brush basically perpendicular to where you want the spatters to go. I'm not saying you can aim it precisely, but you can at least define more or less the trajectory it's going to take. I'm going to add a few to like the dust kick up here because these things don't happen 
in a vacuum. Like there's still shit spraying around while the tires kicking up dust. There's still dust kicking up while the guns are firing and accumulating stains in said dust. When the plane lands, there's dust collecting on top of any oil that has come out of the ejection chutes, etc. So you kind of have to make sure that everything is mingling in a pleasing way. Okay, so I'm going to finish up on the shadow brown and come back when we switch over to the starship filth. This one's a little bit more intense, so we're going to be a little bit more restrained with it. Although because it's so, although because it's so heavily diluted, it's still not going to make a huge difference. It's just going to add that sort of balancing mechanism. The main area I want to focus this on is where the stains already are. Give them a more interesting quality to them than just kind of smears and blending. Okay, so here's where the underside is at. It's looking pretty good. It may look a bit hyper contrasted from this angle, but in my experience, you can put a shitload of contrast into this and when you flip it over onto its feet, it's all invisible. So I'm aiming for more contrast than I normally would in a bid to actually have some of this show up a little bit. We'll see. 